Our first guest tonight served as United States Senator from Massachusetts and Secretary of State for President Obama. He is now the Special Presidential Envoy for Climate as part of the United States National Security Council. Please welcome back to the show, John Kerry. Thank you for being back. Good to see you too. Welcome. It is lovely to have you here. I know uh, we have you here in town because of the uh, the UN. Uh, do you feel like you're making progress? Yeah, I okay. do. But can I begin just by saying thank you for doing this, for joining with your fellow late night hosts. It's fantastic, and you do an incredible Bernie Sanders. Thank you. I am. Um, great. That means the most to me, and I only wish my Bernie could stop the warming of our planet. <laughs> um, uh, I think he's warming the planet, actually. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to quiet down a little. Um, so this is, uh, I, I want to ask real quick, because the UN had a, had maybe, and again, you're a big star, special envoy, but on Monday, oh BTS performed. I know, I know, they're great. You're a, John Kerry's a BTS fan? I watched the video of their, you know, what is it, Permission to Dance or something, it's fantastic. Yeah, they know great. what they're doing, right? Well, you know, you see them, I travel a lot nowadays, and you see them in all these advertisements, uh, you know, when they're prepping the airplane, uh, they're doing one thing. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of crazy. You want to get up and <laughs> you want to. You, <laughs> no, I would love you. But they're not fun. To. They, yeah. they, I would. A lot of people I know would love me not to. <laughs> uh, no, but it's they're really good. They are good. And uh, and they're taking this seriously as well. And I think a lot of young people right now are sort of getting wise to the fact that this is going to be their planet for a lot longer than it's going to be your and my planet. Is there any reason for them to be optimistic right now? Yes. I mean, there is a reason to be optimistic. There's also a reason to be hopeful. Very hopeful. Um, you know, just yesterday, President Biden upped the ante of what the United States is going to do to support the transition and to help convert to electric cars and all the things we need to do. Um, and he, he's uh, committed about $11 billion that the United States is going to deploy in order to help the transition. But equally importantly, he's got major legislation in the Congress, try to deploy 500,000 uh, electric vehicle charging stations to accelerate this transition, uh, a tax credit for production, for investment. We have to invest. I mean, in order to get there, Seth, we have to invest trillions of dollars over the next 30 years. No government has the kind of money that's going to make this transition happen. So what really encourages me is the private sector. They are stepping up. And you have CEOs all around the world. You have major financial institutions that are prepared to invest literally trillions of dollars in the next 10 years, which the scientists tell us is the critical period. It does seem like there are uh, some moderates, uh, even on the Democratic side, who are, who are maybe trying to slow this down a little bit. Has it been frustrating for you that it doesn't seem to be uh, that the entire party is taking this as seriously as they should? No, I think they're taking it seriously. What, what frustrates me are the people who think that ivermectin is going to solve a problem. No, yeah, they're problematic. Well. Or, or, you know, I mean, there's so many... Uh, there's so much disinformation. There's a whole party that's waiting for the My Pillow guy to give them a clue as to what they ought to do, right? Yeah. That's a problem. I mean, seriously. We've lost years here. We lost three years with President Trump. He pulled out of the Paris Agreement. Thank God that, that governors, Republicans and Democrats alike, continued to deploy their renewable portfolio laws in, in the states. So America isn't as far behind as some people think. But the world is far behind. All of us together really have, uh, you know, a shortened amount of time to get this job done. And the kids are absolutely correct to be furious, to be frustrated, to scold us and say, adults, hey, be adults, get the job done. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, obviously, Paris uh, was reported on 2015 when you negotiated that climate agreement. Now we're coming up and you're preparing for Glasgow in the fall. Right. And uh, I, I believe it, it's being sold as a, our last best chance. Is, is that the correct uh, well, it's, wording? It is the correct wording. I think I probably used those words because if we, here's, here's where we are. The scientists have made it clear to us that they made it clear three years ago that we had 12 years within which to make the most critical decisions in order to avoid the worst consequences of the climate crisis. So we lost three years. With President Trump. Now we're trying to make up for it and we're trying to accelerate. We have nine years within which if we don't do enough to reduce the emissions that are already out there, 
We can't achieve net zero by 2050. If we don't do enough 2020, 2030, we can't keep the Earth's temperature increase to the 1.5 degrees that the scientists say we should try to do. We're at 1.2 degrees now. So we've got this tiny cushion of 0.3 degrees of warming before things really begin to, to, uh, to snowball out of, out of uh, all proportion. And that's the fear people have, that, that uh, we have to take advantage of these 10 years. Right now, I'm, I'm proud to say, President Biden's summit produced 55% of the global uh, enterprise effort, global GDP, is committed on plans that will hold the 1.5 degrees. But that means we still have 45% on the outside of that. And we've got to pull them together. 20 countries, Seth, are the equivalent of 80% of all the emissions. So we're one of them. We're number two. China's number one. Russia, India, Mexico, I mean, a whole group of countries have got to step up in the next days, us included, and we all have to do better and do more. And when you talk, I would imagine uh, when you discuss uh, the countries you just listed, uh, you know, the bigger... Uh, the bigger emitters, the bigger yeah. economies. And I would imagine the approach you have with them all has to be very different. And, and uh, you know, based on being a Secretary of State, uh, the diplomacy involved must be uh, very delicate. Well, every country brings its own set of challenges to the table. And every country uh, believes that it needs a certain something to be able to help them get there. That's what we're busy doing right now. We've been, we have a great team of people, uh, experts, many of whom have negotiated the Paris Agreement and have been to the other meetings over the years. So I think we have a good sense of where we have to go and how we get there. We've got to help some countries to make the leap that it's better on the other side here. This is not a choice between protecting the environment or having a strong economy. This, this, they both can come together. And what we know is that the job creation here will be just stunning. I mean, sometimes, you know, I think about the United States of America invented the internet. We went to the moon. We, we have a rover on Mars. We can remotely send it around Mars. We do incredible things. But we can't send an electron from California to New York in the year 2021. That's crazy. And it's insulting because we could have an energy system that's more efficient, that's more effective, that's cheaper. And we can use AI, artificial intelligence. We can use quantum computing. We could be ahead of this curve. And we want, President Biden wants the United States to lead the effort to develop the new technologies to create the capacity to make this transition effectively and on time. And it's all about kids. You have kids, I have kids, grandkids. Yeah. This uh, really is their world we're talking about, and we need to get our act together. I'm glad you mentioned kids, because I have one last question I want to leave <laughs> you with. I, the last time I saw you, um, we were out, and I had my son, and we were both wearing straw hats, and my son took off his straw hat, and I put his straw hat on top of my straw hat, and I'd forgotten that I had done that. And then I saw you, and I went over and said hello. Did you know that I was wearing two straw hats. Not only did I know that you were wearing two straw hats, but when I saw that, when I saw you, I said to myself that George Bush got Will Ferrell, and I got a guy who wears two hats. <laughs> How dare here? you? How dare you, sir? John Kerry, everybody.